For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carol Black and I chair the board that has been setting up Think Ahead over the past nine months or so. Many of us are here tonight and looking forward to talking to you this evening. For us, this evening is a very exciting moment. Um, the Think Ahead team have been doing a great deal of work to make this evening possible. And for us this evening, we're going from an idea in development to an operational program. And that's extremely exciting. We're now ready to go out and recruit the people who will make a difference to the lives of mental health service users. In fact, we've already started, and Ella will mention this later. And we've had a hugely positive response to the offer that Think Ahead is making. When they hear about mental health social work, what it is, and the value it brings to society, Britain's top graduates and career changers are excited and enthused. And I'm very pleased that I'm going to do a recruiting event in Cambridge in April. So I'm hoping very much that I can excite some of the Cambridge undergraduates to be interested by this very, very exciting programme. A huge amount of work has gone into making this happen, including from many of you in the room this evening. We're very grateful for all the advice and support we've received. And one of the reasons we've invited you here this evening is to say thank you to you for enabling us to move as quickly as we've moved and to launch Think Ahead. So can I say a very big thank you to all of you. This is an informal event, so we're just going to have um, a few short remarks from our minister and then from our chief executive, Ella Joseph, and from Dr Sarah Carr, who chairs our service users reference group. Although the reception this evening is for invitation only reason of space, today's launch is very much a public event and you may have caught the media coverage this morning in The Guardian and The Times and on Radio 5 live and in community care. So please feel free to share what's said tonight and any photographs or videos you take. If you like to tweet during the event, our, our Twitter handle and hashtag should be on the screen uh, uh, behind me. My own personal reasons for being involved, um, I think are at least interesting to me when I reflect back on my career. Of course, it's difficult, first of all, to refuse Norman when he asks you, so uh, that's a very good reason. But after my history degree, I did do a training in medical social work. I never actually became a medical social worker because I went on to read medicine. I wanted to work with people, but I must say then the detective nature of medicine uh, won and I went on to, to train as, uh, as a physician. But I am deeply interested in social work and the opportunity to do something now in mental social work really, really means something to me. So I'm absolutely delighted to introduce our keynote speaker, the Right Honourable Norman Lamb MP, who is Minister for Care and for Support at the Department of Health. There would be no Think Ahead without Norman. It was his idea to ask the Institute for Public Policy Research to carry out the project which led to Think Ahead being proposed. He secured the funding for us to set up and designed the programme, and he supported us at every step along the way. Um, he's a pleasure to work with. Norman, thank you for everything you've done for Think Ahead and for taking the time to join us this evening. So, over to you. Thank you very much. Well, I've only got about a fortnight left in the department, so it's uh, <laughs> caught me just in, just in time. Uh, I wanted to start by just thanking, first of all, uh, Natalie Acton and Ella Joseph, uh, the two chief executives who've uh, led the way on this. And uh, they've worked brilliantly, in my view, uh, with their small team to uh, reach out, to uh, learn and understand, uh, and to take people with them uh, in a really impressive way. 
and they've had an energy and a dynamism about them which uh, has made this whole uh, initiative possible. So enormous thanks to them. And of course they've been backed by Carol uh, and a great board. Um, and having Carol uh, on board uh, with her uh, status, uh, with her commitment and her interest has been incredibly important in getting where we've got to. Also I wanted to thank IPPR for their work at the initial stages for incubating uh, Think Ahead. Uh, their work has been uh, necessary, essential, in order to get to uh, this point. Uh, so, and, and also just thanks to everybody else who's uh, been involved in getting us to uh, this critical stage now. Uh, it's enormously appreciated, in, in, including, I should say, uh, the staff, uh, the officials from the Department of Health who've worked very hard uh, as well. Uh, in supporting this, I, I think, really exciting uh, initiative. And finally, I should just mention Claire Tyler, my colleague from the House of Lords. I'm not sure whether she's here tonight. Uh, she doesn't appear to be, but she led the way in the early stages and her role also has been uh, incredibly important. The reason why uh, I feel very strongly about this is uh, my absolute belief in the fundamental importance of social work um, uh, and in particular in terms of its role with uh, mental health. Uh, I think it's terribly important that you get a good balance between the sort of medical uh, model and the social model uh, and uh, it's incredibly uh, valuable to have uh, social work well represented, effectively represented in those uh, joined up integrated teams. And it's no reflection at all on very many brilliant uh, social workers who currently work uh, within mental health social work. But I, I just think there's an unanswerable case really that uh, if we care about social work and if we care about promoting the status of social work, it's surely best in the future to go for the very best people uh, as one route, uh, as one group of, one cohort of people uh, to go into this uh, profession and if we can identify people who are uh, potentially leaders of the future who have uh, great intellectual capacity but also uh, empathy and compassion uh, to go with it uh, then <clears throat> I think we can do an awful lot uh, for uh, the status of social work but critically uh, for people who absolutely rely on social work uh, for uh, their well-being. Uh, but it, combined with my commitment to ensuring uh, that we elevate the status of social work, and indeed we, have, we in this government have appointed the two new chief social workers, we, who, both of whom have done brilliant work uh, in uh, themselves uh, promoting the status of social work within government. I think those roles have been incredibly valuable. But it goes hand in hand with my total passion for uh, mental health. Um, some of you may have uh, seen uh, uh, news from the weekend. Uh, I, we've had to deal with some extraordinarily difficult uh, personal issues um, which relate to our oldest son's uh, mental ill health, diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder as a teenager. Um, and uh, we're going through a difficult period at the moment, um, which was reported over the weekend. Uh, but my insight, I suppose, um, as one of the very many parents in this country who experiences mental ill health and has to cope with it, has to be supportive of a son or a daughter uh, or a loved one uh, who experiences mental ill health, my insight makes me just recognise what so many families in our country go through and makes me absolutely determined that we achieve genuine equality for those suffering from mental ill health. It's not something that they enjoy at the moment. Uh, the system is disadvantaged, disadvantages them, absolutely, in terms of the flows of money, in terms of entitlement to access uh, on a timely basis. Uh, mental health loses out to physical health. In terms of the financial payment systems, it loses out. And it's sort of as sure as night follows day uh, that the money flows into physical health because of very politically resonant uh, waiting time access standards, which
which don't exist at all in mental health, uh, outrageously really. And that's why I've, it's made, I've made it my purpose to ensure that we have those same waiting time standards to guarantee timely access uh, in mental health that have existed for so many years uh, in physical health to correct that discrimination at the heart of the NHS. So it's my combined interest in uh, promoting the vital role of social work but also my passion for uh, mental health uh, that makes me so interested in this whole programme. And its origins um, come from me one day reading an article in The Times written by Andrew Adonis. Um, and he talked about the enormous impact that Teach First has had um, uh, bringing into teaching, which after all is just so critical for uh, our children's uh, futures, bringing in a whole new cohort of very, very bright people into teaching who up until recently had just not thought about teaching. The numbers of people from the top universities going into teaching was really very, very low, uh, extraordinarily low. Now one in ten Oxbridge graduates apply to teach first. It's quite an extraordinary transformation. It's suddenly become cool to go into teaching. And then an awful lot of them stay in teaching, having uh, uh, met their commitment for two years. And so then he, in this article, wrote about Frontline and the potential impact that Frontline could have for uh, children's social work. And I finished the article finding myself completely in agreement with the case that he was putting but thinking, what about adult social work? Why is that left out of the equation? And so I went back to the department and asked to meet with Andrew Adonis uh, as a matter of some priority. He came to the department. He was completely supportive of what I was suggesting uh, to him. Glenn here, Glenn Mason, was very helpful in those very early stages in getting things uh, moving as an official in the department. Um, and we then got IPPR involved in developing the model and coming up with the proposition that actually it was uh, mental health social work where the need was greatest uh, for a new cohort of brilliant, uh, committed graduates. So here we are, and uh, I'm enormously excited by it. And if we are to achieve equality for um, those suffering from mental ill health, this is a critical element of it. Uh, and so... I'm delighted that it's got to this stage, and I'm also delighted to confirm that we've got the money. We've secured £1.6 million within the department to make this possible. So it's fantastic. Um, oh, thank you. It's not my money personally, but I'm delighted that I've secured it. So uh, thank you all so much for coming. Thanks for the fantastic support we've had from so many people within social work, within academia as well, critically important for the success of this programme. It's really exciting. Thanks a lot. Um, Norman, can I say a very big thank you, first for sharing your own family story with us. That's not always... Uh, easy to do, but also, despite everything else that's going on at the moment, ensuring that we did get our funding, because that was obviously crucial for us to be able um, to, to carry on. Um, I'd now like to introduce Ella Joseph and Sarah Carr. Many of you will already have met Ella, Think Ahead's chief executive, and some of you may also know Natalie. Natalie must be around somewhere. <laughs> Natalie is there, who shares the chief executive's role with Ella. Natalie is currently on uh, maternity leave, having recently given birth to a very beautiful baby girl, if the photographs are anything uh, to go by. And we're delighted that Natalie is here, and I hope you will have the opportunity of catching up with her as well. Dr Sarah Carr chairs Thinks Ahead Service Users Reference Group, a very, very important reference group for us. And she and the group have been advising us throughout the design of our programme. So I will hand you over to Ella, and then Ella will 
hand on to Sarah. Oh, uh, Norman, thanks very much. Absolutely brilliant to see so many people in the room today. I'm looking out over a sea of friendly faces. So, um, yes, you know me, you know members of the team, and happily this is the culmination of a, a programme of work where we've been able to work with lots of you personally. So, delighted to be celebrating with you a bit this evening. Um, I'm going to say a few very, very short words just about where we go from here. Um, as you can see, we've got um, a hugely passionate uh, an advocate of a, of a minister and a chair and a fantastic top team at, at Think Ahead that have created our new brand identity and all the products that we're now taking out to uh, students and career changers who we want to get interested in our programme. So we're on track to open uh, for applications this September so that participants can start our scheme uh, in next September, September 16. And we're now busy away, busy, fi busy working away finalising our programme. So we're in the process of um, working to secure an academic partner who will be the university that deliver the academic elements of our training and we are speaking to lots of you uh, about becoming host organisations for our participants so we're looking for interested trusts and local authorities to come forward to talk to us about what it's going to mean to actually have Think Ahead participants working alongside you through their two year training course. Um, so fantastic to have everyone in the room that we can speak to. We've uh, published a, a big long document, our invitation to partner, which tries to give as much detail as we can about what that arrangement will look and feel like and we know that there's detail to be worked out and we very much see that as something that we want to do in collaboration with you. If there's anyone in the room who hasn't come across our invitations partner or who might be interested, please look for someone with a Think Ahead logo on their, on their top. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about, about some of the detail there. Um, so this is very much for me a partnership. It's a collaborative process where we've been working uh, with you. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted also to, uh, to welcome here tonight a number of service users who've been part of our service user reference group. And we've been working hand in hand with that group throughout the process as well to make sure that our ultimate goal of improving the services that we deliver to people is achieved. That's absolutely front and centre of mind about what we're actually trying to achieve here. So in order to tell you a little bit about that group, um, I'm going to hand over to Sarah Carr. Uh, Sarah, as well as chairing our group, is also the co-vice chair of the National uh, Service User Network and also has lived experience herself of accessing these services. So we're delighted to have her on board and she's incredibly well placed to, to tell you a bit about how things look from that perspective. So. Thank you very much, Ella. Yeah, what's been striking about um, Think Ahead has been the recognition that people who use services are the ones who truly know what difference a good social worker makes. So we'd like to thank the members of the Service User Reference Group for offering their time, wisdom and expertise thus far. The panel of experts by experience, Sarah, Ali, Lee, Ronald, Min, Patricia, Alex, Marie, Polly and Karen, some of whom are here this evening at the front, they've offered both life and professional experience, as well as that of mental distress and service use. We even have a former psychiatric nurse and a former social work student to advise us, so what more could you ask? There's been equal involvement at all stages of the programme design and development from the curriculum to the branding. The advisory group were even consulted on how they'd like to interact with the development board. And their response? An open invitation for board members to join the group as observers. So we'd particularly like to thank David Croisdale Appleby and Ruth Allen for coming to join us. The group's views and suggestions will ensure that training is designed to prepare social workers for the complexity of services and the reality of people's lives. We need social workers who are navigators and advocates, who can make a real difference. People who work with you, stick up for you, get things done and help make sense of things. People who offer a consistent and continuous relationship in a sometimes fragmented mental health system people who respect and build on the individual's own skills and knowledge and those of their friends and family. Finding the right people to recruit 
is as important as getting the training right. So the group have not just shaped the training, but given insight into the personal attributes of good social workers. The emphasis is on respect, empathy, constancy and compassion, the importance of EQ as well as IQ. So from the start, the whole programme has been directly informed by first-hand knowledge of where and how changes and improvements need to be made and what difference a good social worker can make to a person's life. The group's expertise, I'm happy to say, will continue to guide the programme as the Think Ahead team enters into its operational phase over the coming months. And we're all very excited to see how the programme will, be, will uh, evolve and will be involved with that too. Thank you. Sarah, th thank you very much. Just a couple of very quick uh, final remarks from me. Before we close, I just want to tell you very briefly about how we are trying to attract applicants to, to join our programme. Um, as I've said, we're, we're on course to get together an absolutely uh, first-class uh, training programme that gets the best evidence-based um, approaches and, and, and the, the very most the most talented people onto the programme. Uh, so now all we have to do is go out and find the right people. Our recruitment team have been out and about all around the country already. We've visited dozens of universities and we're on track to do more so e over the coming days and weeks. We've been getting a really good reception. Um, people are immediately interested by the Think Ahead model and they really um, are excited by the, um, the prospect of being in a cohort of people, being paid to train and being on the job ready to practice right from the get-go. Um, I'm really uh, now looking to you to help us uh, recruit this fantastic cadre of talented people. Um, I remember at our last uh, big public consultation event, the question that I got asked most often from people after the formal proceedings were over was, how could my niece, nephew, son, daughter, friend, neighbour apply to this programme? So because of that, we thought, actually, there's a role that you can play to spread the word, to tell those people who are members of your, uh, your family and, and probably further afield about how to join the programme. And that's why we've given you these little packs of uh, business cards. They don't have our names on them, they're just the generic Think Ahead uh, website and information that you can pass on. So please do feel free to spread them around liberally. There are plenty more if you run out. Um, and obviously there's lots of information on our website that you can, uh, that you can access as well. Um, so I have finished the uh, slightly cringeworthy attempt at trying to turn you into Think Ahead salespeople. Um, it's really just to say thanks again for coming. Please stay and have a drink with us. Please have a lovely evening and please look for people with a Think Ahead logo. We'd be more than happy to tell you more about our programme. Thank you very much.